Well, hello class. We are now getting into the pelvic girdle. So the pelvic girdle is going to be connecting our lower limbs to the axial skeleton. So the pelvic girdle is made up of the two hip bones. The two hip bones. So this is the front. So this is going to be over the pubic area. These are going to be our pubic bones. But what I want to, to bring up here, well, we have our two hip bones. The two hip bones make up the pelvic girdle. They are articulating with what bone of the axial skeleton? They are articulating with the sacrum of the axial skeleton. So uh, I'll show you this more at the end too, but just make sure the pelvic girdle is just the two hip bones. They are attaching the lower extremity. Remember, girdles attach their extremities to the axial skeleton. The sacrum is part of the axial skeleton. When you include the sacrum, now you have the pelvis. Do not con um, confuse the pelvis with the pelvic girdle. The pelvic girdle is just the two hip bones. The pelvis is the two hip bones, the pelvic girdle plus the sacrum. So let's get started with the pelvic girdle. So in class, well, let me go ahead and get um, doo -doo -doo -doo, multiple select. We're going to isolate this. This is what you're going to be seeing on a lab practical. This is, we have one of these down in the, the BRC, and we have these in the classroom, obviously. So you're, you are going to be have to pick this up and tell me if it's a right or left. I showed you how to to tell when it's right or left in the classroom. It's kind of hard to do that on a um, on this video because it's not 3D. So first thing you need to know about each of these hip bones is they are made up of three separate bones. This is the ilium. The ilium is the topmost bone, the superior bone. So when you have your hands on your hip, you are feeling this part. You are feeling the ilium. If we go on the back side, this is the ischium. Ischium is the back posterior part of um, the hip bone. Ilium, ischium and the pubis, or the pubic bone. The pubis, or the pubic bone, is the frontmost bone. Always remember that because the pubic bone is um, where the pubic area is going to be. So let's make sure you have your master list out, and it would be nice to have your textbook open too, so you can follow along. So let's start with the ilium. Ilium, the topmost bone. So look at your master list. What do you need to know? Always remember this is this is anterior. This side is posterior. So that's going to help you with our first terms. Get rid of this. Go away. So what do you have on your master list? Ilium, the iliac crest. So the iliac crest is this top area right here. It's this topmost superior area, the iliac crest. This is actually, um, I, I talked about where you find bone marrow. You're going to find bone marrow up in here. And this is where they're going to harvest bone marrow. If you have a bone marrow transplant, they're going to go through here, the iliac crest. They can stick a needle in here 
easy to feel. You can feel your own iliac crest. So the iliac crest is going to get you oriented, orient, orientated to this hip bone. So the first term you have is the anterior superior, superior iliac spine. So once you know where the iliac crest is, and we know this is the pubic bone, this is the anterior part, so start from the anterior, this is the iliac crest, you're going to go anterior, forward, superior iliac spine, that's this area right here, then you're going to go, there's a little divot here, and this is the anterior inferior iliac spine. So far so good. Then you're going to go to the back side. Go back to the iliac crest. This is the back side, the posterior side. So we're going to go to the posterior because we're going back side, posterior superior iliac spine. A little divot right there posterior inferior iliac spine iliac spine and then we're going to come to the greater sciatic notch this is a huge notch in the back the greater sciatic notch what else is on your list the auricular surface the auricular surface where have you heard that term auricular surface before? From the sacrum? Yes, sacrum has an auricular surface. At the end of this video, I will hook up the sacrum back to this area. So this is the auricular surface. This is going to be articulating with the auricular surface of the sacrum. That is where the hip bone is going to be attaching to the sacrum, to our axial skeleton. And then we have the iliac fossa. The iliac fossa is right in through here. This is this area right here. Oop. Much easier to find on a real bone, right? So that is the ilium. Next we're going to go to the ischium. Ischium, this is posterior, the back side of your hip bone. So we just finished up with the greater sciatic notches here. Then you're going to come to this point, this point back in here. You are now in the ischium. This is the ischial spine, ischial spine. This is going to be important clinically um, for OBGYN, for the obstetric, obstetric stocks. If you're pregnant, they want to know where this is um, and how, how I'll show you when we get to an articulated pelvis. Ischial spine, important clinically. Um, ischial spine, ischial tuberosity. That is going to be this real big thickened area back here. This is thick, big, bulky area of the hip bone. Hard to really tell here, but it is. This is the ischial tuberosity. When you are sitting down, you are sitting down on this ischial tuberosity. Here's the ischial spine, ischial tuberosity. Let's go out. It's kind of woo. And then you are going to the ramus of the ischium. What's a ramus? Remember, a ramus is an angular extension, angular extension. So here's the ramus of the ischium right here. And this ramus of the ischium is going to be connecting with the pubic bone up in here. So got all those, the ischial spine. Got your greater sciatic notch, and then once we get down into the ischium, ischial spine, ischial tuberosity, the, the ramus of the ischium. And then we're going to get to 
oops, the pubic bone, the pubic bone. So what do you know, need to know about the pubic or pubis, the pubis? Um, the superior pubic ramus, that's going to be up here. Superior pubic ramus is this area right in here. This, this area right here. Superior pubic ramus. Inferior pubic ramus. This is the part that's projecting down. The inferior pubic ramus is going to be joined up with the ramus of the ischium. Um, the pubic symphysis, well, we're going to, I'll hook up another hip bone, and that's going to be this area where it's joined up with the other hip bone. So those were the three bones, ilium, ischium, and pubis. Where they all join up, all three bones are going to join up. They're all going to fuse in here. Let's get Let's multi select. Let's see. Let me see if I can do that. Let me pause this. Well, I, I couldn't quite do what I wanted to do, but what I want to show you is when you have the ilium, see, this is this little socket here, this cavity, this is the acetabulum, acetabulum. It's made by the fusion of the ilium. You can see here's the ilium. It's part of the acetabulum. Ischium, it forms part of the acetabulum, and the pubis. It forms, um, forms part of the acetabulum tabulum too. So that is where all three bones fuse, and it's going to take till you're in your, your teens for all these three bones to finally fuse together. So ilium, ischium, pubis make up one hip bone, and let's go ahead and articulate two of these hip bones together. So now we have our two hip bones. This is our pelvic girdle together. This is going to be the pubic symphysis. So on an articulated skeleton, you will see um, some, some cartilage in here. What type of cartilage is here that's joining the two hip bones? Needs to be strong. So it's our strong fibrocartilages here. So this is going to be the pubic symphysis where the member symphony is together. So this is the pubic symphysis. I forgot to talk about this hole, this big hole. Another name for a hole, a hole in a bone is called what? A foramen. So this is the obturator, obturator foramen. And we have um, another, another structure when we have our two hip bones um, together. This is going to be the pubic angle, the pubic angle. Oops. So the pubic angle are the pubic arch. I was just checking to see if this was a male or male, a female. This is a male. And I don't have a female model on my essential skeleton. It just I just have a male. So this is the male. It's a it, the angle is not very wide in a female. Look at our um, female um, females in we have one of these a pelvis. We have a female and a male pelvis in our rooms. You'll notice in the females it's much wider. And here we can see the ischial spine sticking in. So in a female pelvis, this is going to be the limiting factor for a baby to get through, to give birth. The, if these are sticking in and the, the amount of space between each of these is not wide enough for the baby's head to pass through, you'll probably end up getting a C-section. So your OBGYN um, doctors usually measure this to make sure you have room 
to let that baby come out. So what did I want to do? I wanted to go ahead and look at a sacrum. So remember, this is our pelvic girdle, just the two hip bones. This is the auricular surface of your hip bone. It's going to be articulating with the sacrum. So let's get our sacrum back in. So we got our sacrum back in and we see our pelvic girdle is now articulating with the sacrum. And now let's look at just the sacrum. Let's isolate Mr. Sacrum. And now you see the auricular surface of the sacrum who is articulating with the auricular surface of our ilium. Let's go back. And this is going to be called the sacral iliac joint. Sacral because it's the sacrum, iliac because it's from the ilium and it's the it's a joint, it's where they come together. A joint is where two bones come together. The sacral iliac joint. The other thing I wanted to go over um, before we get to the lower extremity is something called the pelvic brim. Now the pelvic brim is just going to be this plane. If we follow, I wish I could put little dots. Maybe I can draw it. Let me see if I can draw it. We're going to start with the sacral promontory. Remember the sacral promontory is this slip here. Oops. And then we're going to follow it along this line. This bony ridge here. And we're going to go all the way. I'm not keeping in my lines very well, am I? And we're going to go back up to the sacral promontory. Um, that sucks, but you kind of get the idea. We here's oh my gosh, there's the sacral promontory. It's going to be like more like that. So this is <laughs> pretty bad, but this is the pelvic brim. I have a nice um, picture of it in your worksheet. So why is this pelvic brim, this imaginary plane, important? So this pelvic brim is going to be dividing something we call the false pelvis. Everything above this plane is considered the false pelvis. Everything below this pelvic brim, this plane, is considered the true pelvis. So in, if you are pregnant and you say the baby has dropped, it now means the head is no longer in the false pelvis it is broken through this imaginary plane, the pelvic brim, and is now in the true pelvis. So the baby's head is now in the true pelvis. And so now the baby is dropped down into the true pelvis, below the pelvic brim. So I think that's about it for the, the pectoral girdle much easier to see um, on an articulated pelvis, isn't it? All the, the landmarks. You can get orientated much easier, but unfortunately on a lab practical you're not going to have an articulated pelvis. You're going to have a single hip bone and I will have several landmarks on um, a single hip bone that you will have to identify. But just play around with your hip bone, check it out. Um, we'll have them in the BRC and of course in the classroom. So that's it for this video and now we'll go on to the lower extremity bones.